so john is here john will take you forward with the hands on session thank you sir thank you ma'am so uh, participants i will be sharing one file in the chat if you see you might have just got it oiler bubble new dot zip okay so here we have already set up the set up the case i will go through the file once and then we can run it okay can you please download and extract this file in the run folder like you have done previously so i have copied that folder into my run folder kindly do that please once you have done that we can go ahead as sir has sketched you know we can see that our domain is similar to the one that we did yesterday so yesterday some of you were having some problem in understanding the domain i will quickly go over it again so let me open this in the terminal okay so i will just run block mesh and i will visualize it so here what we have is we just have one block with mesh inside it so now what we are going to do is as uh, sir said that certain region we are going to declare as uh, say in this case air because uh, our whole domain will be water and certain region will be declared as air now how we do this so yesterday uh, viraj was showing to you right so what we are going to do is use a set fields right this is our 3d geometry hmm? if you can see over here so using set fields dict this cylindrical region hmm, will de uh, will denote that as air and the region this uh, this yeah. this region on top that will de uh, declare as air the rest remaining will be as will be water so i will uh, after this i need to run the set fields utility and once set field is run then you will see the difference so right now we have nothing just let me run set fields i will also go through the set fields dict once but let's first visualize it so now if i do alpha dot air you can see the region on top is air hmm? the region in blue is water and the region over here is again uh, air so this is how we have set it now let me go to set fields dict uh, so that you will understand now what what uh, we have written in the set fields dict so if i open my set fields dict over here if you see throughout by default throughout the whole domain we are declaring alpha dot water as 1 that means the whole domain is of water and the air fraction in the whole domain is 0 now in certain regions right where we want the say now to say a bubble or this is not exactly a bubble but the region with air we are declaring uh, the we are calling region as cylinder to cell that means all the cells that come within this cylinder we will assign them values as alpha dot air as 1 that means we will assign them the region to be air so how do we do that to do that we specify two points p1 and p2 so those points are nothing but the center points of the two circles you see one circle on the front face over here and one circle on the back face so as biraj was talking about it yesterday to define a cylinder you would need two points the starting point of the cylinder the ending point of the cylinder right and the radius of the uh, uh, this cross section so that that we are specifying over here so the starting point the ending point and the radius and all the cells with that lie within this region hmm? in those cells we will assign alpha dot water as 0 and alpha dot air as 1 hmm? that means those whole regions will be now air similarly the region at the top right there also we have added here the region at the top there also we have added air so how we do that those regions will be selected by the utility box to cell now all the points lying within this box so now what this box is so this box is nothing but to define this box we need to specify two points one is uh, any any corner so this is one uh, one corner and the other will be diagonally opposite corner at this end so that we are calling it as a minimum and maximum uh, limits so that is what we will be defining so that is after we do that and when we run set fields this is what the system does other important thing to know is 
<clears throat> if you would have seen in your zero folder we have alpha dot water dot org and alpha dot air dot org so open form uses these files and generates alpha dot water and alpha dot air once the set field utility is run so we need to keep this original files because if i open this here all our boundary conditions whatever are needed for solution are given and if you see this alpha dot water then it it gives a list of the internal field where alpha dot uh, water is 0 or 1 right in this case where alpha dot water is 1 so all our boundary conditions uh, go to the end right so to have an original copy of that file we uh, we name it as alpha.water.org now uh, block mesh is same as what we have seen yesterday hmm? prgh and t, uh, u and uh, u and prgh values also remain same now what is different in this case as compared to the previous one is now in the constant you have to specify something called as phase properties so now if i go to phase properties in the phase properties we need to specify what are the two phases in this case the two phases are water and air and for water what is the diameter so our diameter we have assumed to be constant and we have given the value of the diameter as one okay because in our case the uh, water is kind of like the continuous phase and air is the dispersed phase so we have given a large value of d for water and air Again, we are using the constant diameter model. So the diameter of the air particles hmm, or air bubbles, we have given as uh, 0.3 mm. Then we have something called as blending. Now, blending will be used for, uh, this will help the solver decide in which region do we have a continuous phase, in which region do we have a dispersed phase. So if your alpha is between 0.3 and 0.7 for air, hmm, then that region will be called as a uh, what you can say mixed region. If it is less than 0 0.3, then it will be uh, dispersed. If it is greater than 0 0.7, then it will be continuous. And then according to this, the various drag models that are there that will be applied. Along with this, we are defining the surface tension between air and water. Now, interfacial compression coefficient, like uh, you had seen yesterday, C alpha value, right? If C alpha is one, that means we are uh, we are applying interface uh, interfacial compression and our interface will be sharp if it is less than one or zero then we are not applying interfacial compression now uh, as sir was saying that there are many drag models over here we are using the schiller newman drag model hmm, for air in water and both water in air and for air and water we are using the segregated model now uh, you can go ahead and look uh, look at what these models are in detail I will quickly show you like what is a Schiller Newman model. So to see that you can go to your browser. So I'm showing showing you this so that you can also search for yourself if you find any other model and if you want to use that. So type openform uh, openform dot org dot org. Right, and in resources go to C plus plus source guide. Click on say version nine, which we are using, and the search option is yeah. In search, I will be typing Schiller Newman. Okay, so you see the Schiller Newman, uh, everything related to Schiller Newman pops up. Okay, so what it is, we can go to the uh, source file, the .c file. You'll see the execution over here. Okay. So if you look at it at the bottom over here, Schiller, for Schiller Newman, the drag is calculated based on the RE. So now uh, the equation is something like uh, 24 into 1 plus 0 0.15 RE raised to 0 0.67 for RE less than 1000, and for RE greater than 1000, it is something like 0 0.44 times RE. So you can look at look look this up. In some cases, they would have also specified what is the uh, what you can say resource for this. So you can read up more on what the what that drag coefficient is and how it uh, how it computes drag. And as sir has already mentioned, the RE is uh, based on the diameter of the uh, dispersed phase. In this case, the uh, air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is done. 
so if in this case we are not modeling lift the aspect ratio we are considering to be default that is one we are also not modeling virtual mass heat transfer phase transfer volubrication so what are all these things so virtual mass means if there is a relative acceleration between the fluids then some uh, force that is corresponding to this virtual mass will be added if we are considering heat transfer between the phases or phase tra transfer they have to be added here wall lubrication is what happens if the bubble goes towards the wall then how it should react hmm? that or any uh, particle goes near the wall then what it should do and last turbulent dissipation is uh, how the bubble uh, will interact with the or bubble or particle will interact with the uh, turbulent eddies so all these things uh, all these things you can add depending upon your requirement after the end of the session i will share certain resources with you so that you will be able to you know go through this okay so this was our uh, phase properties files next in transport properties we specify what is the uh, what you can say equation what are the density and various properties so this is same as what you had done yesterday now let me go ahead and run the simulation uh, so because uh, what you can say uh, the time required to run the simulation is a little bit more and to reduce that i have used the decompose paradigm and i have given four number of domains so i am giving uh, i am only using four processes because i saw that generally people on an average are having four four and above only so i have given four if you have more you can increase this and make it eight or whatever but if you leave it four also it's fine because uh, with four it, the run time is it is uh, it's very less so now open this in your terminal i think i've already opened so the first thing that you need to run is block mesh so i've already run block mesh after block mesh once the mesh is created we need to define we need to set the fields like where uh, in what regions will air will be there in what regions water will be there so that also i have done so for you you run the two commands run block mesh and then run set fields which you had already done previously after you do that run decompose part so it will decompose the domain in in my case it will, it is decomposing it into four processes now once this is done we need to run the simulation in parallel and uh, if you remember the command to run simulation in parallel is mpi run then you specify the number of processes by the keyword dash np4 that is four processes and then the name of the solver so our, our solver is multi phase euler foam so name of the solver and then the keyword parallel indicating that we want to run the simulation in parallel so biraj has typed the command in the chat so if you are having any difficulty you can copy the command from the chat so again i will uh, i will reiterate so first will be block mesh after that you you have to run set fields and then you have to decompose don't change the sequence after after set fields then you decompose and then run the uh, simulation in parallel it will take around 2 minutes 1 to 2 minutes to run Yes, uh, so uh, Mr. Prabhu, if you are having a few slots, you please check uh, if you have four processors. If you have less than four, so if you have only two processors, make uh, make that decompose part the number of subdomains from four to maybe two. So now, once uh, we get the solu uh, this uh, solution, see yesterday somebody ran para view, uh, para view after this or para form after this, and you are not seeing the results because you uh, what you had missed. you have missed the step of reconstructing so you have to reconstruct the results so you have to run reconstruct part so after that we have got our uh, results now i will run the command para form and if i click apply and from here i want to see the phase fraction for air so you see to begin with air is at the bottom as i'm clicking we see the air molecule or uh, the air region now in this case the difference is this is the air region and not a bubble okay it is going up and it is mixing with the uh, air at the top so this is the result that you are getting okay 
well, if you have this, you can try something. Uh, you can try changing a couple of parameters. Like let's say go to uh, not zero. Go to system constant these properties. And maybe this interfacial compression that is there, maybe reduce it a little. Make it 0 0.1, 0 0.2. This is something that you can you can try, but you can try that on your own um, later, little later. What I want you to try is so yesterday Biraj gave you <coughs> an assignment to reduce the height of the uh, water column and then run the simulation. Today, I want if I want you to what I want you to do is I have given one region. Okay, where there is bubble in only in one region. Instead of that, what I want you to do is do something like this. Yes. If I have that, huh, I want you to simulate something like this, right? Keep one bubble above and one bubble below. The dimensions have been given to you. So the center of the bubble is 5 mm from the bottom. The radius of the bubble is 1.5. Okay. I am not to specific I am not to specific about this. You can give maybe 4 mm and 4 mm and maybe give diameter as 1 mm, 1 mm. That is fine. No? But just try doing this. Hmm? This is so that you understand what changes you need to make and in what file. Okay. So uh the result uh shown in Paravi is same similar to VF approach, right? Yes, but what yeah. will happen is if you keep reducing the diameter of the dispersed phase, uh -huh. right? Then what will happen? This bubble, when it is going up, hmm, the, okay. it will also try to. Uh, uh, what will happen is it will kind of diffuse. Hmm, it will not remain intact as one one bubble. Okay. Okay, that is also something that you can try a little later. But when we are simulating, uh, what you can say, uh, fluidized bed, bed next, you will be able to see that. So. Uh, Try this now. Try setting two bubbles, one above the other, and see what result you get. So you should get some interesting results. Can anyone tell me what will be the approach to do this? What you need to do? It is not as simple as yesterday's. Yesterday you had to only edit one value. It is a little bit more difficult, but not, not too difficult. So first let me ask, have you finished the previous uh, simulation? Can, I, can you reply in the chat? No, sir. It is running. Okay, it is running. Huh. So in the meantime, can you tell me, I will show the uh, set fields dict so that then you can tell me what are the changes that need to be done in case you are running. So let me go to my system and then set fields dict. Yeah. So okay. this is your set fields dict. Hello, sir. Uh, can you um, explain once more that like phase properties uh, file? Uh... Okay. Yeah. So, one minute. What is the error somebody is getting? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, once you uh, reduce the number of domains, hmm, then in that MPI run, also you have to uh, change the number. Yeah. So, I will explain that again. So in constant phase properties, yeah, yeah. So we start with what we have to first specify what are the different phases. In this case, we have water and air. Okay, then, uh, like, what is the phase model? So we are going to consider the constant diameter model. So we need to specify the diameter of the phase. This will be needed to calculate the drag force, right? So because water is our continuous phase, we have given a diameter of one. Yeah, air is a dispersed space. We have given a diameter of 0 0.3 mm in this case. And again, we are considering the diameter to be constant. You can change this model to make it maybe uh, there are some uh, different models like isothermal, where that, uh, there are models in which the bubble, uh, uh, the diameter will change depending upon the uh, region pressure and all those things. Those models are also there. You can try finding them. So one way of finding that is, I'll quickly give you a hint. Uh, so what you can do if you want to know what are the various diameter models available is you remove this constant, add maybe something like uh, say banana 
no, just just for the name sake so what what will happen is open form when when it reads this file it will throw an error saying that banana is not defined instead the available models are and then it will list say like constant model isothermal model so you will get a list of all the models that are available this is a quick quick way of finding it out and then you can search uh, and read up on those models and see which one suits best for you okay next is blending now blending will be needed uh, say in cases where you cannot distinguish between which one is a continuous phase and which one is a dispersed phase so here what we are saying if uh, say your air is uh, or concentration of air is greater than 0.7 or less than 0.3 then it will either be uh, dispersed or uh, continuous in any, any anything in between it will be mixed phase next uh, we are specifying the surface tension okay uh, so surface tension we are specifying it to be constant and a value now interface compression is similar to what we did yesterday right mm -hmm. to make the interface sharp now there are uh, drag models so for drag there is uh, there is like if air is the dispersed phase in water then you are using one drag model if water is the dispersed phase in air then you are using another model and if both of them are like kind of mixed then you are using something called as a segregated model now you can read up more on this i showed you how to search you can go and type the name in that source code and look at what is written over there so you'll get more idea about that also at the end of the session i will share some resources online which is which are available wolf Dy dynamics is a good uh, good place from where you can get uh, very good information hmm? uh, they have lots of uh, what you can say uh, tutorials as well as they have explained all these things but if you want to understand any model in de in detail you will have to read up literature and you will have to understand the source code because everywhere you see people will just you know give give you few hints as to what it is but the applicability and when to use which model for that you have to go through the literature okay. then uh, then we have lift aspect ratio virtual mass heat transfer all these things so you can you can model all these things as well right if you see that lift may be significant add lift if you see that the diameter of the bubble is not constant like uh, your particles are not the same size right uh, the same size i mean they are not spherical if they are having some oblong shape or something else then aspect ratio will come into picture if there is relative acceleration between the phases then virtual mass will come into the picture if there is heat transfer between the phases then that will come into the picture similarly phase transfer and then wall lubrication means if you if your bubble is approaching the wall how it should react whether there should be some uh, what you can say uh, repulsive force that is there so that and turbulent dispersion will be how your bubble or your dispersed phase reacts with the turbulent eddies so all these things have to be modeled and those are accounted for in this uh, phase uh, phase properties file uh, hello sir uh, this diameter in uh, this pure isothermal phase model like it's cal calculated based on the model or i think some geometric property no no that that is that is geometric property that is something that you have to specify say like in fluidized bed that will be the diameter of your uh, solid particles in uh, in this uh, water and uh, air system generally then you have to see uh, like uh, say if you are as sir gave an example right wherein you are passing air from some perforator or something then by experiments or by maybe from the perforator size you will know what is the average size of those particles so that will be your input parameter so that is a parameter that is input that is used by the model to calculate the various forces like drag lift and all those things so here water diameter one means what like what is that no, means? see because uh, water is a uh, what you can say isoth uh, uh, water is your continuous phase hmm? right. so its diameter will not matter so you are giving okay. some and the thing is in all these things these are placeholders so you cannot uh, what you can say not write anything over there if you don't write, it will throw an error. So you have to give some value. Say large value is also fine. Okay. Okay. So, but in air, we are mentioning uh, the diameter of the... Yeah, yeah. For air, we are mentioning the diameter. In this case, I have mentioned 0.3. If you, you will see, what you can also try doing is change these values, like of the, of the diameter and see what happens. If you reduce this uh, to say very low, like say in microns, then you see that the whole bubble that we have initially given, it is a whole lump, right? While going up, it, it diffuses. Okay. something like that you will also see so that okay, is possible okay. for you to do okay i understand i understand thank you so okay so uh now 
going Hello. back to the set fields dick yes somebody is saying something uh sir we are using com- uh, this multi phase euler foam solver yeah. uh as far as i know it is used for compressible flows yes so and our flow i think it is incompressible okay so no this will we... work for this will work for both i think okay so uh okay for if it is incompressible then uh, we will not be taking a uh, heat equation into consideration right okay uh yeah i'm not uh, i'm not so sure about that john can i just join in yes yes please yeah so so the, the if it is a compressible flow so that means in that condition if the if either the primary phase or the dispersed phase density is a variation of pressure then that means that needs to be defined in the fluid system itself because both the dispersed phase and the disp- uh, continuous phase they are primarily fluid right whether it is air or water it does not matter they are fluid and how yes. is the fluid's thermophysical property whether the density is kept as constant or if it is not then how it is kept as a function of pressure that needs to be defined that's okay. one point the second point is if it is a compressible flow then there are source terms to be appropriately it will change also for a compressible flow system that's it so so if i want to use this uh, uh solver for incompressible flows then uh, uh, i will not take into consideration the variation of density and i will give it as a constant so it will work fine with incompressible also yes yes okay thank okay. you in this case what mr john has showed he has just taken water and he has just air bubble air bubble mm-hmm. changes its shape uh, i mean not in the eulerian context like say if you f- physically imagine this this is like a bubble or a, a region of bubbles collection of bubbles and their their bubbles will change their shape and size the pressure inside the bubble is changing all this there is a pressure drop happening all that is there but still we are saying density is fixed we are imposing that it is an incompressible system because we are not talking about very high speeds uh, typically in a contactor like say right. bubble column contactor bubble column is something where a gas is passed into a liquid the gas velocity is would be the right. order of only few centimeters per second it could be just 10 centimeters per second mm. 20 centimeters per second that's a very high velocity 20 centimeters per second of gas sparsed into a liquid is actually very high velocity for that system so that means for all practical purpose also it will remain as only incompressible flow so the fluid would be like not a constant density right. it's only an incompressible flow system okay yeah so so this uh, yeah. solver useful liquid yeah what is your question so uh, this liquid system right i i am not able to hear you but i am assuming you are asking whether can you do for liquid Hello? liquid yeah so you can do for liquid liquid right. also you have, you have to just use the next to fluid as also a liquid that's it instead of air if you give it as oil kerosene then it will be a liquid liquid yeah. system okay okay so thank you so quickly i will show you what you need to change to do that right so this this region adds one bubble so i will copy it and do that again so what i am doing is with this i am adding one more bubble okay but now i need to just edit the location so first bubble was uh, 4 mm from the uh, bottom and had a diameter of 2 mm i will keep it 4 mm from the bottom and make it, make it say uh, sorry radius radius as 1 mm so diameter is 2 here maybe i'll make this as 6 so i'll increase its height and then give it a radius of 1 so now we have two two bubbles so it was it was as simple as that so we had to run this command or we have to uh, we have to uh, copy this command so that it is done twice so at the top it will create one bubble at the bottom another so just these two changes and the heights will be different x coordinate will be remain the same the y coordinates will be different having a radius of 1 i think i need to reduce this because uh, 4 plus 1 and 6 so they will be touching otherwise let me make this 
So I've saved this. I'll just rerun this simulation now. So before rerunning, remember you have to clean the case. So I've cleaned the case. And now again to run, I have to type block mesh. Then set fields. And then decompose, decompose path, MPI run. So let's see what we get. So you all can try doing this. I think now by now you should uh, you should be a little bit more confident in trying to edit this. So maybe after the workshop you all can try and do a little bit more hands on. Next after this what we will be simulating is we will be simulating our uh, the next uh, second case that is fluidized bed. So now fluidized bed what I have done is I have copied from the tutorial case itself. So you can also copy the same thing, but I've added the decomposed part dict from the previous dictionary to here. So I think I will quickly just compress uh, compress it and send it to you so that you can also run it. So I've compressed it and I will share it with you all. So I will add So in the uh, in the meantime you all can download and extract this. So I've just shared fluidizebed.zip. Okay, the simulation is done. So let me reconstruct it. So uh, don't forget to reconstruct. So reconstruct and then paraphone. Mm -hmm. So here, if I go and look at the phase fraction of air, I see now that there are two bubbles. So as they are going up, they are merging. Okay. I could have uh, <clears throat> kept one. I could have increased the distance so that merging would have been a little, what you can say, delayed but it is merging very quickly here. Let me try and do that. In the meantime, can anybody uh, guess why the bubbles are merging? The top bubble is merging with the bottom bubble. I will make this eight. So why do you think the bubbles merged when both both we are leaving at the same time? They should both uh, go and reach top one after the other. Then why are we seeing this bubble merging? Yes, uh, correct. So Arpita is saying because of the wake created by the first uh, bubble, second bubble accelerates. Let me just see. Yes, correct. This is called as wake entrainment. So the first bubbles wake, uh, there will be like a low pressure region. This is something like a slipstream, right? So if you drive behind a vehicle, right? And if you go very close to it, it can actually suck you. So there is a low pressure region. That's why they, you know, they say that whenever a train is crossing, don't uh, stand very close to the platform. Hmm? So because there will be a low pressure region that will be created between and that can suck you. So that is kind of what is happening over here. So the wake uh, behind uh, the wake region of the first bubble is what 
kind of accelerates the second bubble and cools it and sucks it. So that is called as wake entrainment. Okay. So I hope you have copied the uh, fluidized bed case and extracted it to your run directory. So please do that. Okay. I will reconstruct and then I will uh, Oh, I think I gave too large a distance. So you all can try playing around with this. And if you see that you, if you give a, if you give the right distance, then the first bubble will suck the second bubble. Uh, now let, let us go to the fluidized bed case. I will quickly talk about the fluidized bed case. The setup. So in this case, what we have is let me go to the block mesh deck. So here again we have a very simple geometry, right? We have a vertical column in which at the at the bottom we have inlet, at the top we have an outlet, then the sides are walls, and the front and back is empty. So very simple geometry. Okay. That is a vertical column with, uh, inlet at the bottom, outlet at the top and sides are walls. Okay. Now in this, what we are going to do is in this, we are going to, uh, let me go to the U air velocity. Sorry. We are going to, uh, Arch air as I said. Okay. So initially the, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that channel will be filled with particles at the bottom. Then we'll parse air. So to simulate this, to simulate this, uh, what we need to do is at the inlet, we need to specify something called as an interstitial inlet velocity. So something like an average, uh, what you can say an average velocity of the flow. So this boundary condition makes sure that we are getting an average velocity of 0 0.25 meters per second in the Y direction or upward, upward direction. Then uh, that is our inlet boundary condition. At the outlet, we are calling it as a pressure inlet outlet velocity. Hmm. Now, uh, because we have specified the pressure at the outlet. So pressure at the outlet, we have uh, specified as, let me go ahead and open that. So at the inlet, we have given a fixed flux pressure. That means uh, the pressure is computed from the uh, velocity field. And at the outlet, we are giving a PRGH pressure. Yeah. Now, this fixed flux pressure also will adjust the gradients that are there that based on the uh, body forces, body forces like gravity and surface tension. So it takes all those things into account. That's why we give the fixed flux pressure and both at the walls and the inlet as well. Now, uh, if you see your velocity, at the velocity, we are specifying an inlet. At the outlet, we are giving a pressure inlet outlet velocity. So it will, what it will do is it will, uh, at the outlet, it will give a zero gradient. And if there is some inlet, it will calculate the inlet velocity based on the uh, flux that is there at the wall. So that is what this boundary condition does. At the walls, we have given a no slip boundary condition. The front and back are empty. So this is for are air and particles. Sorry, I discussed only for air and the particles. So uh, for the particles, we see internally, uh, we are initializing them to be zero and the inlet outlet and walls, we are giving zero. That means what we are saying is the particle will not cross the inlet or the outlet. Hmm? They will only remain in the domain and the walls have been given no slip boundary condition. This is what has been imposed. Now, uh, there are additional temperature files, okay, that are there in which the temperature has been given as 300 throughout, okay, at the outlet, inlet, outlet boundary condition. So this boundary condition allows for, has an outflow, but also allows for some amount of inflow or reverse flow. And if there is an inflow or reverse flow, it will happen with a temperature of 300. Hmm? Inlet, whatever the air is coming will have a temperature of 300 and the walls will be zero gradient. So these are uh, pretty straightforward boundary conditions. Let us go to uh, PRGH. 
Now in PRGH at the inlet we have the fixed flux pressure. Okay, uh, at the outlet PRGH. I think I discussed this. Yeah. Outlet is where we are specifying the pressure. Inlet we are uh, calculating the pressure, and the walls also we are calculating the pressure. Now uh, these are some default or you can say turbulence turbulence files. Now if you look at uh, there is also one part uh, one file. So you will understand that when I go over here. So let me go to the constant and go to the phase properties. Phase properties is what is needed, right? Before phase properties, let us go to thermo thermophysical properties. So in the thermophysical properties, what we are mentioning, we are mentioning what is the uh, what you can say uh, properties like um, CP, CV, mu, all those things. So here for equation, we are considering it to be a perfect gas. This is for air. For the particles, you see in this case, what they have considered is they have considered uh, these particles to be glass beads. Okay, having density of two thousand five hundred. Okay, so this is what we have specified. Now, if you see, we have also something called as momentum transfer. So for air, we are considering the simulation to be laminar. But if you see the momentum transport file for the particles, uh, their properties are basically calculated based on something called as the kinetic theory for this uh, this granular granular flow. So based on the kinetic theory for granular flow, these properties are calculated based on all these models that are available, the Gidos uh, model. Okay. Uh, you can have a look at them and see how it how it is being calculated. So now calculate these properties. We need to specify the uh, the temperature for this uh, for this field, right? That is done in this uh, zero folder. That is the theta for the particles. Okay. So uh, so this is what we are going to specify. Now this this value this is called as a granular temperature. Hmm? So granular temperature is something that will be calculated. We are just giving some initialization. So normally we generally initialize it uniformly zero throughout, but some small amount of reference, uh, or you can say uh, small values has been added so that we want to avoid division by zero. So this value, a very small value is being added to avoid division by zero. So uh, all these things are needed. Now let us go to the Phase properties. So phase properties is the main thing. So if you see over here, we have two two phases: particles and air. Okay. The particles again are constant diameter. So here you see they are uh, sizes uh, 0.3 mm. So they are considered to be 0.3 mm in size. And we are giving something called as a maximum packing uh, packing factor, right? So that is 0.62. So if the glass beads kind of they are uh, even very close to each other, they are settled. They will not occupy the whole volume. The maximum volume that they can occupy is 0.62. Okay. Now for air, we are considering that to be the uh, continuous phase. So its diameter, we are keeping it as one. Hmm. Now in this case, blending is not needed because our continuous phase is always constant air. It cannot be the other way around. Okay. So that's why there is uh, blending is not there and we have given continuous phase as air. Surface tension we have neglected. Now aspect ratio if you have not given, that means the diameter is constant. Now we have given the drag. So the drag coefficient for this is Gidos for origin when you, you can go and search for this. So this accounts for the packing factor and all those things. Now here we have given a virtual mass force and a heat transfer. So in this case, the heat transfer between the, <laughs> the solid particles and air is modeled by the Rand's Marshall model. So if you, if you want, you can search for that model. And you will get details of that. So similarly, how we have done uh, for the previous one, you can go and search. Let me open the C file. So here you see uh, whatever is the, what you can say, Nusselt number will be calculated based on the RE and PR. So Nusselt number is calculated based on the RE and PR. So RE, uh, 
and clear. So for this, the size of the particles will be needed. So in this case, uh, uh, what I can remember is the uh, heat transfer within the solid is not modeled. Only uh, for, uh, from the solid, whatever heat is being transferred to the fluid, that is modeled. So if you need more information about this, you can read in the literature about the Rand's Marshall model. Okay. Uh, now, yes. Where was this? So again, phase transfer, wall lubrication, all those things we are not considering. Now to run this, again, I have added the decomposed product. So what you need to do is go to your fluidized bed. I've already opened that in the terminal. Yes, I block mesh. And then set fields. Okay, I, I should have showed the set fields for this. So in the set fields is where we are saying that initially half of the domain hmm, is uh, like here, if you see, we have divided. So previously we could say that half of the domain is uh, complete air, right? So we would we would give uh, or uh, air as one and particle as say uh, zero. But in this case, even though all the particles are uh, settled at the bottom, they will not occupy the complete volume, right? So what uh, what is the maximum volume that they can occupy? 0.63. So we have given a volume that is slightly lesser than that 0.55 for the particles and the remaining one minus that should be given to the air. So in this region that is at the bottom bottom half, we are defining that 0.45% of the volume is air and 0.55% of the volume is particles. So this is our initial condition and rest of the places it is complete air and particles are zero. So this is what we are giving. So now let us, uh, we have run the block mesh. Now let us run set fields. And then after set field is decompose. So we have to run decompose path and then MPI run. So we are having the same solver. So you can run the same command. If you just press the up arrow key, you will get the command. So it is running. This will take some time to run. This will take around four to five minutes to run. In the meantime, let me add some, what blending model should I consider in this case? In this case, there is no blending because uh, it is already, what you can say, or I mean, I think so maybe uh, the question is some, something else. Yeah. Hello, excuse me. Yes. Okay. So I want to ask about this decompose paradigm file. So can we copy okay. this file to any of the tutorial case and make it to run parallel? Is it possible? Yes, yes. Just one minute. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, so does anyone have any other further question for Professor Narin? He's about to leave now. So what this last Harsh Patel, Mr. Harsh is asking, does this model consider actual spherical diameter or just a continuum model with porosity? No, we are not talking about porosity uh, of the particle. Porosity of the particle is something, the space which is inside a particle. What we are talking as the void edge or hold up is actually the space outside the particle. That's one. And in the model equation, I'm not talking open form answers or something like that. It is nothing to do with the CFD software. The mathematical equation, if you see the drag force, lift force, Reynolds number, everywhere else, the linear dimension diameter is on an equivalent spherical diameter. So model is developed assuming bubbles and uh, particles are spherical in nature. So I hope uh, Mr. Harsh, I have answered uh, your question. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So if there is anything else later on, I think people can still write and otherwise, uh, thanks. Thanks to all. Yeah. Okay. I will tell them to, if there is something to write to us or maybe to email to yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. It's Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Uh, so, uh, to answer your question, this decomposed power date now is universal. Okay. You can just pick up this decomposed power date, add it into any, uh, what you can say, any of your simulation. Just change. So because this uh, method that we have written is a swatch method, it will automatically decompose your domain into whatever. You don't have to specify 
in x number i want this uh, in the x direction i want so many uh, divisions in the y i want say like we had done in the first case right on the first first time when you use decompose paradigm uh, i think when harish showed it to you so that time you had to specify that there, there should be two uh, two divisions say in the x direction um, one in the y and zero in the z or whatever mm -hmm. so that the multiplication has to be always equal to the number of uh, processes that you have in this case you just change the value over there right in the decompose paradigm whatever you have so if you have eight cores put eight and then use this in whichever simulation that you want okay so I'm that understood. works yeah. Yeah, thank you so much yeah and also the residual files that were provided to you right they they will also work uh only thing is in the residual file if you open you have to mention you have, uh, what variables residual you have to monitor like say in in uh, in the case where i demonstrated addition of a scalar the same residual file will work over there but when you add over there in that residual file you have to mention the scalar say in our case we had written scalar 1 scalar 2 scalar 3 so you can add them and those residuals will also be monitored okay so i hope the simulation is done but it's still running so that's the good thing whatever you are learning from from this you can copy these files try incorporating it you know using it for your own case you know so yes, all sir, these things are... yes uh, sir actually if we wanted to simulate it uh, as a 2d axis symmetry case simulate what yes, sir uh, this uh, bubble race case uh, that we are running uh, in yes. a axis symmetric condition okay okay huh. Sir, how can we means uh, assign the value of the vertices or how can we divide the domain? Okay, so uh, for that, right, we have a tutorial. Uh, is it available in the open form? Let me check. Uh, if if we have, uh, I don't remember whether we have it on our website or no. But what you can do is you can select a which type of geometry. Okay, you can uh, think of it like if you cut a birthday cake, right? How you cut? You cut like a wedge, but in this case for 2D approximation, the wedge angle will be very small, close to five degrees or something. I, if I remember correctly, then the two sides uh, of the wedge you have to give the boundary condition as uh, I think cyclic. Okay, then it will simulate as a 2D axisymmetric case, and that will that will definitely simplify because here we are simulating it as a uh, what you can say as a channel, as a slice, as a vertical slice. And that way you can simulate the axisymmetric case. Okay, so that is possible. Uh, previously, we had done a nozzle case. Is that the similar condition? Correct, correct, correct. Huh, correct. What you did for the nozzle, right? It is exactly okay. the same thing. This nozzle, if you just uh, what you can say that z, z axis, if you make it, uh, if that, if instead of along the x axis, if you make it along the z axis, then you can simulate this and consider that to be like a pipe or something, right? And then give inlet. And then the two patches will be cyclic. Okay, sir. Thank exactly. You, sir. Uh, that is what you can do. Thank you, sir. So I think our simulation is done. Let me do. Oh, sorry, I didn't reconstruct. So I need to reconstruct. Okay. Now, in this case, this, uh, this, uh, what I can say, Fluidized bed itself has so many complexities. You can model how the what you can say particle is interacting with the wall, right? Uh, so, the, so it is just what you can say a full research field in itself. So, if you are interested, you can uh, you can you can read literature and there are different models. Let me do that. Boom. and then. Alpha dot a. So you see now, sorry, I should take alpha dot particles. So at the bottom are my particles, right? As soon as I start to play, air is being purged from the bottom and these particles start to levitate. And then the air will diffuse in, break these particles up, and then we start to see the fluidized bed in action. It is breaking it up, it is moving up. We have simulated only for two seconds. So this is what you will get. 
you can try changing the velocity try changing the amount of particles that are there in the bed so you have these files you can try there are various models as i told you you can search also what model to what models are available by just instead of uh, maybe i can demonstrate that to you i think we have uh, around half an hour people also wanted uh, me to demonstrate how to add a scalar right so what should be done what should be the one priority so please tell me whether we should do the scalar transport addition now or you're okay with that because in the afternoon session i don't think so we'll have time we have around half an hour okay raghavendra is saying can you please give a demo with residual file okay a residual file is pretty straight forward raghavendra i will see where i have if i have a residual file on my system so i i did a residual file over here see this residual file looks something like this here you just add which field you want if you want only u okay yes the basic at least okay chaitanya uh, we can do that quickly hmm. so uh, i'll quickly tell him what needs to be done so this is the format of a residual file right so maybe i can share this with you or we have already shared it in some session wait okay. john Yes. Just can you open the residual file once again? Yes. Huh. So whatever variables we define in the zero folders, those should yes. be placed over here in the fields, right? Not all, not all. I can delete whatever you want to monitor. But that should be defined in zero folder, correct? Correct, correct. That should be available. If that is not matching the way it is written, like P should be written like P, like U, whatever the values that should be written as it is, like T. If you want to monitor temperature, T. we have added scalar one so scalar one will be written over here so as it is written same way you have to write this over here along with this right what you need to do is just one more thing that in your control uh, control dict file right at the end right you have to just add this line that if you see the line at the bottom are you able to see that functions yes, yes. and then include func residuals so it will include this residuals file that is placed in your system folder just this so then it what it will do it will start to log this residuals so when you are solving uh here okay let me open uh, so it will be it will create a folder called as post processing okay and in post processing it now i have added residuals so folder name residuals will be there and then if you open that a dat file will be there and it will write all those data then you can copy this data and you can uh, plot it or you can use foam monitor that we have demonstrated so this this is pretty straight forward this is a good way of doing so with this what ha what can happen is uh, uh, during run time itself you can monitor your residuals like how we do in fluent or something right you will get plots something like that is possible okay with this residuals so only two changes here you have to mention uh, this and in your uh, in your system folder you need to add this file i think this file will be available if you just search residuals in your uh, tutorials this file will be available in some of the other okay okay so it there is, is foam same. monitor yes foam monitor is a utility which is already there in your system so if i want to run foam monitor over here what i'll do is i'll just open see good way to do will be you go to your post processing open that uh, folder and open that folder in the terminal so you don't have to type the whole path and just type foam monitor foam monitor and then see this dash l is to plot it on a log scale if you don't do that it will plot it on a linear scale so remember this is not min uh, minus 1 it is uh, hyphen and then l small l to plot it on the log scale and then you have to give the name of the file in this case residuals dot dat once you do that this sort of a gnu plot window will open so what your simulation is running you have gone to your residuals folder you have opened the zero folder and you have plotted this this you do it in a new terminal 
because in your terminal in which this code is running that will keep on running okay so along with the code this file will be written again and again and foam monitor will keep on refreshing this so you will see the progress of your simulation and what is happening to your residuals so if you see in this case for one of my simulation the residuals were coming down so i know that okay it is it is kind of converging but my pressure is not kind of uh, become stable so i need to run it for a little bit more longer time so with this you can uh, what you can say uh, estimate what is uh, uh, what run time do you need yes understood thank you okay yeah welcome so uh, and uh, one more thing that i think harish pointed it out that if this command is still running that uh, gnu plot will keep coming again and again so you need to do control c to terminate this command of foam monitor yes uh, so quickly let me show you what is the steps to edit the so to uh, to edit any solver first thing what you do is go to your uh, installation right wherever you have so in this case our all our all we have installed is in opt right for most of you in opt you will have open foam right and in that you will have applications so in applications you will have solvers so here is where all your solvers are okay if you don't know the path open your terminal right and just type sol sol it will show you the path for the solvers so solvers is in slash opt slash open foam 9 application and then solvers so this will give you the path now you say now i will be demonstrating the basic case of uh, the scalar transport foam so i want to edit this like how i did right i created a new scalar transport foam so i will copy this copy it to say whatever location that i want in my home i have the open foam folder i will do that in this folder so because in the other folder i have the things so let me paste over here okay i have pasted that and then what you do is you rename this important because this this name is already there you cannot use the same name so what you do you rename this rename it to say scalar transport foam or workshop i have so many scalar transport foam so i don't know what to name it i am just writing this open this so in that one make file will be there right in make files will be there right so here you need to change the name as well okay if you don't change the name over here it will compile some other file only so it is new scalar transport form and then i have written workshop okay dot c and c is capital over here and your executable will be created and it will be stored in a app bin right but this app bin whichever is there over here right this is not accessible to us this is uh, this in this app bin this location right foam underscore app bin is where your uh, default whatever comes with your open foam those app uh, those apps are stored or those executables are stored so but we have another uh, app bin called as user app bin so it is foam underscore user underscore app bin so this gets stored in your user app bin and here it will be stored with the name of scalar transport foam but now i need to change that name as well so i will call it scalar uh, transport foam workshop okay and then save it so these two changes have to be done now in options if you see these are what are the uh, whatever files will be needed right for you to run run your case uh, something like maybe like a header files or all these things like finite volume tools mesh tools everything all these things are the ones that will you will be uh, you will need this for your thing So, if you want to know, okay, for my simulation, what I will need, the best thing will be open the solver. Like you will know that I will, I want to make this, and I want to edit this, and I want to make it similar to say like Simple Foam. So you open Simple Foam's uh, uh, options file and see what are the libraries that and uh, they need. So copy those libraries over here. If you have some additional, it doesn't matter. But if you don't have, then it will throw an error. So this is it. So now after this, the main thing. you have to go to create fields and before that this scalar transport form dot c rename that as well rename it to scalar transport form workshop 
now if i open this we'll go we'll go to that again uh, great fields later so here you see here they are saying i am solving for a t equation okay scalar they are calling it as t but i don't want it to uh, i don't want to call it t say i want to call it something else i want to call it scalar okay only scalar as of now or maybe s so i i can write it quickly capital s capital s is standing for scalar so here it is it is saying the uh, ddt that is a transient term for s and here diffusion of s then laplacian of s and for with that you will need the this diffusivity so i'll change that and i'll say my diffusivity is ds and then you can add a source by using fe models or in our case right we knew what the source was so i wanted to add the source something like i want this scalar to decrease uh, in concentration because this is say one of the reactants so reactants will decrease in concentration as the reaction pro proceeds so i will write minus k stands for my rate of reaction so i can say call it krr that is my rate of reaction times my scalar s so this is a uh, i think somebody was asking that day right implicit formulation and an explicit formulation so here you see this is an implicit formulation where your source is written in terms of the scalar itself so this is an implicit formulation okay uh, if you write only a, a value normal then your source is written explicitly then after this so here you see i have written s everywhere but my matrix equation is still called t equation so that i will change and call it s equation so this is what i have changed over here only this now this s equation you have to relax uh, and then solve relax if you are giving some under relaxation or something like that right so it will relax and then it will solve those equation apply constraints so constraints are uh, if you remember i was uh, i i gave a demonstration for natural convection right and there i mentioned that i have uh, applied fe constraints that means i know if i give I, if i am doing a simulation and i am running the simulation say between uh, two plates one plate is at say 100 degrees the other plate is at say 30 degrees so my temperature cannot exceed these limits right in the domain it cannot be more than 100 it cannot be less than 30 hmm? unless if i am putting in uh, from the inlet any cold fluid or something like that say if it is a closed domain and if these are my boundary conditions then it cannot exceed then we can add some constraints so if some constraints are specified these uh, these they take care of it hmm? now again over here from t i will change it to s but this is if you want to add if you don't want all of this you can just remove this okay that's it only these changes have to be done now you will say okay i have made changes over here but how my solver will know what is s what is ds what is krr that i have mentioned right so to specify that you have to specify that in the create fields so if you see the first step over here in create fields you are creating the field for temp uh, temperature so i will edit it over here only i will say create the field for the scalar s my scalar uh, is a volume volumetric field right volumetric scalar field so that is what it is so volumetric scalar field the object's name is s so all wherever it was t i have changed it to s now it is reading the u so because i am solving the advection term as well right so i will need the u so i will need this so i cannot remove this then transport properties so this transport properties is read from the transport properties file okay so this this line will remain as it is because it is reading transport properties from the transport properties file but from the transport properties what it is reading it is reading only the diffusivity dt okay. so now instead of dt i am saying my diffusivity is ds okay and it is a dimension scalar i will call it ds now if you see uh, here also mentioned the dimension over here right the keyword ds and the dimension you can do that or you can if you follow this similar case structure then you whatever dimension you mention in the uh, in your case setup it will work so what what we are saying over here that in the uh, transport properties file look up for ds 
and wherever ds is there that value will be assigned to this variable ds okay then this ds can be used but if you see along with that i have also defined a variable called as krr or my reaction rate so i need to create that as well so i will say i will copy this paste it i think i need to bring it up okay and then i am reading reaction rate krr i am saying reading the reaction rate krr all this yeah saved so this is saved so i am reading ds krr i hope now everything we have done now once this is done i just save it okay and then i try to compile it so to compile it you need to be in this this same folder right where make create fields and scalar transport form is there so you open this in the terminal and then type w clean w clean if some if you have already compiled previously and you want to change then you can type w clean and then w make and if you have made any mistake it will point out over here that if you have forgotten something if you have made any mistake if it compiles properly if it has compiled properly without any problem okay that means we have uh, we have compiled our new solver but how to set up the case so i will tell you that also because this new solver is there but this new solver needs some specific files right so what i'll do i will uh, again open my term here. i will go to tutorials and then uh, cd basic then scalar transport form let me do ls uh, this pitch daily case is there that i want to copy because i will show you why i need to do that not ls so this is like explorer.exe so here is my uh, file i'm unable to bring it down okay so this is my pitch daily file i will first copy this okay and then i will go to my oh here i will go to my run directory okay let me just do this again i am opening my run directory over here okay. and i have i will create one new folder so that later on it it will be easier for me i will say demo in this i will be pasting it now if you see why we, why i need this folder because in this folder there is a structure that is there that is designed for scalar transport form so if i copy these structures right this will help me to make my file similar to this if i copy from somewhere else the structure may be slightly different and then you might get an error so it is always good to copy that tutorial file and then add the others so if you see if i open i have a t file and a u file okay u file to whatever you have to add then t i don't need t right instead of this i will rename it my scalar is s okay not only that inside if you see it is written over there it is a it is written in ascii format it is a volume scalar field and object is t instead of that i will change the object to s then dimensions so my scalar is dimensionless so here is where you can specify the dimensions if you make mistake here then it will be a problem so i have i have written zero everywhere because my scalar is dimensionless okay then let this let these values be as is we don't know now let's see okay i have not i am just showing you where to make the changes once you do that you have to go to constant transport properties so see in that lookup it is searching for dt okay instead of that now dt i am going to call it ds now you will say why it is written twice it is because how it how in the solver we have looked up for it if i don't uh, if i don't need to write this twice then i have to mention in quotes ds over there if i do that then i don't need to write this twice so similarly now diffusivity the unit is still meter square per second in that equation if you compare 
Along with this, I have to write KRR. And then KRR, that is my reaction rate. Now, what is the unit of my reaction rate? Reaction rate's unit is 1 upon second. So it will be 0, 0, minus 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. And then you mention what is your reaction rate. So because you are specifying your dimension over here, even if you don't specify over there, it's fine. So if I want, I will give a reaction rate of 1. With this, it will be able to solve. Okay, now I have made changes in two places. But is this sufficient? So now in my case file, I have changed 0 in 0. I have changed the scalar. In my constant, I have changed the transport properties. In my system, what I need to change? Control dict, FP scheme, FP solution. Okay. In control dict, I will first change the name of the solver. I will call it workshop. For lack of a better name. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Then this was it. Save David. Then mainly FP schemes. Okay. Because now what you have done is you have specified what is the divergent scheme for your scalar. What is the Laplace, Laplacian scheme for your scalar with this diffusivity. So if you don't if you don't change over here, it will say that uh, divergent scheme is not specified. Okay, Laplacian scheme is not specified. Uh, with that error, you can understand. Okay, that I have to make changes over here as well. So you need to make changes and you need to specify that. Okay. Now this I am just writing. You can use any other scheme as well. And in the Laplacian, you have to make these changes. So this is my diffusivity and this is my scalar. So my so these are the changes that you need to make in their FV uh, schemes. So what schemes should be used? You are specifying for your scalar. Next, in your solution, you need to specify what solution algorithm that you are going to use, right? So here, we have specified solver only for T. Okay. So here, I am going to specify so, uh, solver for S. So with this, you will understand, okay, in our scalar transport form, we are not solving for velocity. We are only solving for the scalar speed, uh, right? And velocity is our initial condition and that velocity does not change. That's why we don't need to solve for velocity. So velocity is imported from, uh, from a previous simulation and that is used as an initial condition for this simulation. So these are the changes that you need to do. Okay. After you do this, I think you are done. You can run. You can run. But I don't know how. Yes. No, in that file, let me solution. Uh, yes. The, the solver name is, uh, yeah, what is CBI, CBI uh, tab. Okay. Right? Uh, what is the full form for this? I think it is something called as biconjugate gradient stabilized uh, pressure. I think. Is it pressure? With us? So if you, if you search for this, right, PBIC tab, huh? it is okay. something like a bike conjugate gradient solver, which is stabilized. So it has some stabilization also. And what pre preconditioner you are using. So there are many solvers. Again, if you don't know what solver to use, you can type, you can type, uh, it is precondi preconditioned by conjugate uh, gradient and then stabilized. That is the name. So, uh, uh, you, uh, instead of this, you write banana and then run, it will say, okay, this is not the correct solver. Then it will give you the list of solvers that are available. You can explore each of them and then see which one will suit for your application. Okay. Okay. So this solver is exactly what, like, just like simple form, uh, like that, like this is, I mean, like, because this, this no, 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 these are, these are the linear, linear solvers, how, how your matrices okay. will be solved. Okay, but for Gauss linear, something is already written, right? But what is this again? Uh, because somewhere else I have seen Gauss linear. Uh, that is yes, those are those are the schemes. Those are the schemes for convection. What will be the scheme, right? Okay. For okay. convection, what will be the scheme? For advection, for Laplacian, what will be the scheme? Like this. Uh, okay. If okay. you open the scheme over here, right? Hmm. Uh, what will be the scheme for your convection? This is a discretization scheme. Yeah, okay, uh, to, to put it more clearly, these are your discretization scheme, how your equations will be discretized. Okay, okay. then okay. this is how your equations will be solved. What will be the algorithm used for solving? Algorithm okay. basically will be simple only, but the, the matrix that you get, yeah. right, the final matrix that you get, how will you solve that matrix? 
okay right. depending upon how you solve that matrix also your solution will run faster slower will converge will not converge right if there yeah. is no diagonal dominance or something like that right then you have to precondition the matrix so that it runs faster it it converges so there okay. are a lot of uh, what you can say this is all into the numerical methods of it okay so it is like that jacobi goss uh, uh, yes example. yes some it's something similar to that okay yeah. okay conjugate gradient okay okay, okay yes uh, and the previous one what you saw those were your discretization schemes say like ddt ddt okay. will be uh, discretized by your euler euler uh, euler scheme right and if you search for euler i think first day we had shown you euler right tn right, plus right. 1 yeah like uh, just like newton raphson this euler method is used as correct for correct okay okay fine fine i understand now okay okay i think uh, this is this is it these are the changes that you need to make uh, so this was this was a basic overview as what changes where you need to make right i think swapnil uh, did a very good demonstration you will get a video with that you will understand a little bit more into how what advanced uh, uh, what are the advanced techniques to to do over there like he created some vectors right and he calculated the normal gradients and all also so that was a good demonstration that video you will have right then you can go through it and learn a little bit more okay okay yeah, yeah. but this is very helpful sir thank you thank you very much yeah okay okay thank you i am glad that this is helpful yeah okay i think i'll stop sharing now if you still have any queries you can you can write to us okay you can write to us uh, we are available any other resources like um, raghavendra's yeah. resources yeah okay uh, so raghavendra just uh, maybe now i'll quickly rush, rush for lunch and come back but after i come back from lunch all the resources that i have i will share with you there is one uh, i i forget the name it is a very good uh, very good resource right also along with this what you can do is you can use our our own repository right in fossi we have a lot of case studies right where people have already done things like you know heated plate top heated bottom heated yeah then you can look up and then you can see which boundary condition works because even in in all these resources they might have given you one tutorial and you know what is the way to set it up and all those things but when you set up for your own specific case you see that where the struggle lies so what we have observed is that the struggle lies basically in uh, selecting the appropriate boundary conditions you know why we have only selected the fixed flux pressure or inlet outlet and why its combination with velocity is one way or the other so that is where you will struggle little bit so there are this uh, our open foam uh, case studies you know and uh, we have also uh, what is that called research migration projects right so all those things will be very helpful to you okay you can uh, browse through them you can read the uh, reports that are available what boundary conditions those students have used so they have worked for them so that so is what something during the concluding can... talk now i'll show you our website and i'll show you where can you exactly find the resources and i'll also talk about how can you participate in the project so that you also can gain you know uh, you can gain certificates you can gain knowledge okay so please wait for the uh, concluding talk i'll be discussing everything okay thanks okay. bye bye